that in the past, when you look back, he has proven faithful. He has fulfilled his other promises. There is a scene from the Old Testament that keeps on coming back in my prayer these days. And the scene is this, Jacob wrestling with a strange man. And Jacob is hurt because of this wrestling. Maybe just like us, we have been hurt by 2020. We get hurt by 2020, just like Jacob. But Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. And I think that should be our relationship with 2020 also. We should not let 2020 go until we find the blessing in 2020. And there are blessings in 2020. Let me tell you about some of them. Last week, I officiated my first wedding during this pandemic. And as the wedding unfolded, I found myself getting sadder and sadder for the bride. Why? We were in this big church, but there were only 10 people because of the pandemic. And these 10 people, mostly family and friends, were assigned different tasks because they all had to do something to get the wedding going. Some were assigned in Zoom. Some were assigned other liturgical tasks. And so, because everyone was busy, the bride, before coming to the altar, had no great entourage before her. No great entourage. And then, as the bride marched down the aisle, she just used music from her phone. Wow. Imagine yourself a bride walking down the aisle with music coming from your phone. And I felt so bad for her. And then after the wedding, you know, there could not be any reception. So what did we have? We have packed lunches that we all took home. And I was thinking, how sad, how sad. I wanted to ask the uh, uh, bride and the groom, why are we pushing through with it? Why can't we postpone this? I know their answer. They did not postpone the wedding because they felt everything that is important is already here. Our friends, our closest friends, our family, they're here. And the bride and the groom are here. And God is here before them. What else could they need? That wedding taught me a lot. Taught me to look for what is really important. What is really essential. Maybe the blessing of 2020 is the lesson to seek what is important. To look for what is really essential. Another blessing from 2020. I have a friend who works for a travel agency. So if you work for a travel agency this year, the year of the pandemic, you're probably not going to have a lot of business. And so my friend was scared. Would she get laid off, retrenched, or furloughed? But she wasn't. She had to take a pay cut, though. And that is totally understandable. She was glad in the end to still have a job. And then Ulysses came. And then she contacted me and said, I want to give something to the people in Cagayan. And I was thinking, uh -huh. You know, times are tough for you. You don't have to give. You have children to feed and to send to school. God will understand if you do not reach out to the people in Cagayan. And then she said, yes, times are tough for me. But there are people who are having tougher times. 
I want to reach out to them. And that was another blessing for me from 2020, that no matter how difficult things are, we can still be generous. Today, we also commemorate the martyrdom of Maura Clark and Eta Ford. They were going through a very difficult time in El Salvador. They knew that if they stayed in El Salvador, they might get killed. And they did get killed. So why did they stay? I think they were able to stay there, not, because, not only because they sensed the need, but also because they saw blessing. It is not just need and desperation that keeps you going. It is also when you see there is still blessing. And in the midst of poverty there, in the midst of the suffering of the people, they could still sense God's many blessings. And in the end, they were the blessing in that place. 2020 has been difficult. Has it not? Before we run to 2021, let's pause for a few moments. Remember that scene from the Old Testament. Yes, we've been hurt by 2020. 2020 has tried to break us. But we will not let it go until it blesses us. I will give you your homework for Advent. Before we get to 2021, find the blessing in 2020. And maybe, just like Maura Clark's and Eta Ford's experience, when you try to find the blessing, you, you yourself, will be the blessing. Let us now bring to the Lord our many prayers and our many intentions. That the Holy Father and the bishops of the church may inspire people to trust in God in this life's difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. God with us, hear our prayer. That those who are struggling in their faith may experience and recognize God working in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. God with us, hear our prayer. That parents and teachers may, may pass on the faith to the young people of our time by their witness and example. Let us pray to the Lord. God with us, hear our prayer. That the sick and those afflicted with COVID-19 may share in the hope and joy of the Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. God with us, hear our prayer. That the dead, most especially to the souls of two marinal martyrs, Sister Eta Ford and Sister Maura Clark, may enjoy their eternal reward in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. God with us, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our Father. Help us to trust that you will give us not only what we need, but always what is best for us. This we ask through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed that his first coming, the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. <clears throat> that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Mora and Ita, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, you pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Behold Jesus the God we run to in our desperation, the faithful God we can always trust to keep his promises, the God who continues to bless us. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You may not be able to receive the body and blood of Christ sacramentally, but now I ask you to receive Jesus into your heart spiritually as you say the act of spiritual communion. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we end, I'd like to thank all of those who helped us in our Mass today, our readers, the tech people working behind the scenes, uh, and all of you for joining us in worshiping the Lord this afternoon. May I ask if there are any uh, announcements from the organizers? If there are none, then before I let you go, Surprise quiz. Advent comes from the Latin word adventus, which means coming. There are three comings that we remind ourselves of in the Advent season. What are these three comings? First, the first coming when Jesus came as a baby in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. Second, the second coming. The Jesus that we believe in will return, will come again to fulfill all his promises. Third, the daily coming. Jesus continues to come into our lives and bless us. And that is why we can say, no matter how hard this year has been, there has also been blessing. One final question. Complete 
this statement which comes from the Old Testament. Jacob wrestles with a strange man and then says, I will not let you go until you bless me. And we should not let 2020 go until we see the blessing even in this difficult year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Let us now continue seeking the blessings in 2020. Thanks be to God. Da 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 da